Hello everybody, the long awaited time is finally here. We are now going to be diving into the world of artificial intelligence. In this project, we are, going to be, we are going to be looking at a very simple type of AI, logistic regression. Now, logistic regression is a major aspect of machine learning today, being incredibly advanced in some areas and quite easy to understand in others. So sit tight as we explore the complexities of this machine learning algorithm. Let, let's get into it. Now, in machine learning regression problems, there are two main categories. One is linear regression, and the other, which we are going to be using in this project, is lo called logistic regression. Now, linear regression refers to predicting an outcome based on information over a continuous range. In a way, it draws the line of best fit to perfectly represent the data it has been given. So as we look at this image, right, we have a scatter plot full of random data, but it sort of follows a general trend of an upward linear graph. That is exactly what linear regression does. Recall from basic math that a linear function is defined as y is equal to mx plus b. What the linear regression model does is that it, it selects the m, or slope, and it selects the y-intercept, or b, to best fit the line to the data, which allows the model to best evaluate or predict certain outcomes based on x information. So all that linear regression is doing is choosing the m and the b to allow the model to best fit the data. Cool so far? Awesome. Now, take a look at this graph. We can't really make a straight line that accurately fits this, huh? If a straight line goes from top to bottom, we leave out a few key, key, key certain elements um, of the data. But instead of losing all hope and patience, which is what I did when I first learned this, let's take a look at this function, this sort of curved, interesting looking function. This is called a sigmoid function. But what it does is just a general shape of the graph. What I want you to pay attention to is how this function is doing a much better job of fitting to the data, as opposed to a straight line, that is. So logistic regression, in other words, is a classification algorithm. Taking in a few categories or data points, or hint hint, genes, the model can predict categories like healthy or diseased. Now, I hope you can sort of see where I'm going with this. Logistic regression, in short, uh, in short sentences, serves the purpose for classification. Whether it's an email, whether deciding if an email is spam or not, or disease detection in our case, logistic regression is the way to go. Now, let's take a closer look at this interesting sort of function itself. Okay, so as I mentioned, this main function that is going to be used in linear regression is something called a sigmoid function, which is a pretty weird name. As you can see, linear regression or a straight line wouldn't really do a good job of connecting these green dots, but a sigmoid function fits in really nicely. Now what the sigmoid function is doing is it takes our input values and produces a output value within 0 and 1. If the output value crosses the certain threshold value set, it is taken as a 1. If it doesn't, it is taken as a 0. It really punishes super values such as 0 0.8, right, which automatically pushes it towards the 1, or 0 0.3, which automatically pushes it to a 0. Thus, if your output value is a 0 0.3, you are classified as healthy, for example. If it's a 0 0.8, you are classified, unfortunately, as diseased. That is the sort of classification method that the sigmoid function does. So, pretty simple, huh? Okay, great. Now that we have looked at logistic regression as a whole, how do we measure the accuracy of our model? In other words, how can we actually evaluate how good our function is? We can actually use something that's called a confusion matrix. Now, a confusion matrix is actually used to evaluate, our, uh, evaluate classification models, including linear regression. Now, a confusion matrix is a table, as seen below, that organizes the results of the model into four main compartments. Let's take the example of multiple sclerosis disease detection, since that is what we are going to be using um, or exploring in our project. So first, n. This n value, commonly seen in math, just signifies the number of terms that our model has predicted, right? So as we can see here in this example, 165. That all that means is that our model has predicted 165 values, which are being split up evenly among this confusion matrix. So let's get into it. So the first thing is a true negative, which you can see up here at the top left corner. 
So a true negative indicates that our model was able to correctly label 50 cases as healthy. So just taking a step back, what we have done and what we're using in our data is something called labeling. Remember when we showed us when we when I showed you that uh, data table, we had described a certain data point in our data called outcome, and we labeled that data as either zero or one, depending on the values of expression. That means that our model is, is using something called supervised learning, where the model actually can see after it's predicted, the correct answer, because we as researchers or data scientists have entered whether or not our values are zero or one. So when in the case of true negative, that means that the model was able to correctly identify 50 cases as healthy. So branching off of this, a true positive indicates that the model was able to correctly identify 100 cases as diseased. Now, false positives, on the other hand, means that the model has identified 10 cases as diseased when the patient was actually healthy, which is not good for anyone. Now, false negatives can actually be more dangerous as it means the model has incorrectly told someone who actually has the disease that they are perfectly healthy. So I hope you can sort of see why it is super important for us to analyze our network for complexities to see how it can be improved and advanced to get the best results possible for our model. Okay, so to briefly summarize what we have learned, there are two types of machine learning uh, in regression prediction logistic and linear regression. Linear regression is for continuous cases like the price of a house, which is not a definitive choice such as healthy or not. That is called logistic regression, which has binary outcomes. Now, a logistic regression uses something called a sigmoid function to output probability uh, values between one and zero and pushes them forward as either one or zero. Now we can use something called a confusion matrix to evaluate our model and see where we need to improve. The main terminology associated with a confusion matrix include n, the number of terms, true positives and negatives, along with false positives and false negatives. Now, I completely understand if you do not really understand it yet. I didn't understand it until like the fifth time I had, I had watched it and, and learned about it. So I highly encourage you to take a step back and go back and read more about false positives and false negatives until you fully understand what a confusion matrix is and how to use it. Okay, great. In our upcoming videos, we are actually going to be coding the entire model from scratch to completion. So stay tuned, we are finally getting into the coding after learning all about MS, the biology behind it, um, it the disease of MS, we have learned about data manipulation, data classification, and now we have learned about AI and we are finally ready to code. Thanks and I'll see you soon.